The Hoogar Kingdoms are a violent and brutal place. They are home to some of the strongest, most frightening beings of the Warhammer world. These ogres tower over men and can snap bones with their bare hands. Their origins lie with the Old Ones, the creators of the Warhammer world and its races. They created the Elves, who perform wonders of magic but suffer from a low reproduction rate, the Dwarves, who are stalwart and hardy, yet cannot use magic and cannot adapt well, the Lizardmen, who are their faithful servants and a reflection of the Old Ones themselves, and the Humans, who are very adaptable and have high birth rates but are very susceptible to the powers of chaos. As an attempt to combat chaos, the Old Ones created two races that would be resistant to its call, the Halflings and the Ogres. Yet when chaos struck too quickly, both races came out with great flaws. While the Ogres have almost full resistance to the dark powers, they are near mindless brutes. The Ogres contain superhuman strength, extreme toughness, and a charge like no other. The monstrous bloated things can be deceiving in form, however, for under their many layers of fat lie slabs upon slabs of rock-hard muscle, making them far faster than one would assume. While the Ogres may seem evil and abhorrent, they have no understanding of what is right or wrong. They simply do what they feel is right to survive. When they are slaughtering innocents and devouring humans, they do not take malefic pleasure in such acts. They only do this because they see it fit. So with this, you can understand they are not necessarily completely evil. In fact, in the early times, the Ogres lived near Cathay with general peace. But with all things and resources became scarce, conflict arises. The Ogres in Cathay began to clash, and the Ogres became a considerable threat to the Imperial Kingdom. It is unsure what caused the ensuing events, but it is rumored that the Emperor of Cathay and his wizards may have something to do with it. A green dot appeared in the skies of the Old World one night, and as the nights drew on, it became increasingly larger, until this massive warp stone projectile came crashing down upon the Ogre Kingdoms, wiping out two-thirds of their population. This event awoke a hunger in the ogres they had never felt before, along with a newfound religion. The Warp Stone Comet had a grinning face upon it, and the ogres now call it the Maw. The Maw is their god, and whether or not the comet was a being, or simply the work of a wizard, the Maw likely exists as a god in the Warhammer fantasy world, due to the existence of gods being possible simply by enough beings believing in them. After this event, and the beginning of their religion, the ogres now viewed eating as a sacred act of worship. They grew larger and larger as they continued to stave off their endless hunger. As they wandered the lands consuming all before them, they soon found themselves atop the tallest mountain peaks of the Warhammer world. Upon these peaks were the first giants, not the bumbling brutes you see today, but sophisticated and peaceful people. The ogres quickly took to eating the giants' cattle, that being mammoths, and soon the giants had no choice but to fight back. While extremely powerful, the sky people were very spread out, many of them living alone. So while they put up a good fight, the ogres eventually brought them to near extinction. This massacre led to the giants of today. Due to so few of them left, they resulted to inbreeding for many generations, and were reduced to the fools they are today. It is quite a tragic tale, yet the same would have happened to the ogres if they had not gained the giant meat through conquest. Consuming the people of the sky, the ogres became even more enormous and powerful. They settled in these mountains, and their tribal culture now resides there. Ogre culture is quite similar to that of orc culture, that being the might is right system. Whoever is the strongest ogre with the largest gut is generally the one in charge. If authority is to be questioned, it will almost always lead to a duel in which the victor eats the gut and intestines of the loser, bringing extreme shame to the defeated and death. Under the ogres are a pathetic race called the Noblars. Amongst the family tree of goblins, these poor things are absolute slaves to the ogres. They are viewed as little more than working meat, and will often be eaten if ever in the wrong place or simply displeasing the, their master. Many ogres who take liking to certain Noblars will bite a chunk of their ear as a way of branding them. In battle, the ogres bring to bear a terrifying arsenal. Many ride massive war beasts, while others wield cleavers the size of men and cannons more akin to that of warships. The shamans and magic casters of their tribes are butchers and firebellies. The butchers are the cooks of the tribes and are given extreme respect and authority, while the firebellies are a sect of ogres who worship their fire god and go through many trials to become the casters that they are. Yet aside from all of this, ogres are most famed for their charges. The rumble of their mass can be felt from miles away, and is nothing less than an avalanche of flesh and steel. They do not fare as well in sustained combat, but they usually do not have to, for their charge tramples everything in its way. Some famous ogres are Grease's Goldtooth, Goldfag Maneater, Scrag the Slaughterer, and Brag the Gutsman. 
I'd love to talk about them today, but to keep this video short for all of you guys, we'll have to talk about them another time. Now on to the workout. Ogres rely on short term bursts of speed and extreme strength, and likely would keep the rep range very low. They would also likely stick to large compound movements to work their entire bodies without having to do many isolation exercises. As a result, I will be doing a 3x3 workout of squats, leg press, bench press, overhead press, and deadlifts. After this, I will be doing sprints to train my charging capabilities. We will then end the workout with a massive ogre's meal. Unfortunately, the gyms are still not open where I live, so instead of leg press, I will be doing glute raises, and my squats are only partial squats because my hips have been killing me lately. But other than that, we got the yoga workout going. So I had to bring the ogre's meal with me. It's about a pound and a half of beef, maybe two, and a lot of rice. So I'm gonna eat some of it here. I always bring my dinners with me and my gym gear when I come here, so I'm gonna get roasted for it, but that's okay. Hi. Finished the meal. I ate over a couple sittings because I'm on a cut right now, so I'm not trying to eat like 2,000 calories in one meal. So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was a ton of fun to make. The workout was awesome, and I really like the Elder Kingdom's lore. Soon enough, we'll be able to make some really long videos for you guys where I'll go way more in depth on everything. But for now, I'm just trying to keep it short and just teach you guys the basics of all this stuff. I'm thinking the next video is going to be a 40k video and I'm probably going to do a bit of a physique update and some dieting tips. So I'll see you there. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment and a like if you want. Let me know what you want to see next. Stay jacked out there and work hard.